Welcome to the Profit Engines Podcast. Today is episode number eight. We have a episode about the creative strategy, about getting good winning creative up on your posts, whether it's Facebook or blog post, whatever you're going to be doing on the internet. There's some great strategies here in this episode. I want to remind you that Profit Engines is brought to you by Customer Bloom. So if you have a project or you're interested in getting help for your company in the digital landscape to build your own profit engines, please go to customerbloom.com slash start. Again, please go to customerbloom.com slash start and we'll get you started with your own project. On with the show. Okay, so here's another quick episode for you to think through the creative mindset especially pictures when you're using them in blogs and you're using them in Facebook and Instagram. We've had a lot of recent discussions with some of our clients around how to use creative better. I do a lot of, um, some uh, would say it's consulting, but it's more me just trying to get pointers. And we're really going to talk about the secrets of creative. We've done so many different case studies around this and so many different uh, variations of a theme. So this is really thinking through the process of creative. You have two to maybe three seconds. And I'll say that because this is the key. You've got to convey in two to three seconds the whole process of what you're trying to get across to an audience. Especially in Facebook when you're thumbing through. It's really two to three seconds. That's all you really have. And this is really how to capture attention, right? So the the comp images, right, versus pictures. Okay, so the big thing here, this is, this is the number one tip. If you can think about this, your Facebook feed is full of people's pictures. It's full of other people's families and events and things that people are posting, posting, posting. If you post a picture, especially a stock photo, it's just going to be another picture that people just scroll right on by. So really think about images and things that you can combine that will, even if there's a picture or something of a, of a uh, event and they're putting imagery on top of it, something that's going to break the pattern. So that's what the number one thing to do is to break patterns. So people look at patterns, right? So patterns are the thing in Facebook that we kind of all go through and and especially in Facebook and even in some blogs, if you don't see something that's a pattern interrupt, it's difficult to stop and think. So a lot of the things that happen are trying to get through the the strategy of trying to create imagery. It's really going to be there. Now, conveying the message. So the message needs to be very obvious, right? Okay, so obvious. So the concept is is that if you can keep an obvious message into your strategy that tells the story in a very simple pictorial way. I think today was a good example. We were putting up some new blog posts and I said, you know, what we really need to do is show a picture of like an offer on a platter and people looking at the offer or, or, you know, not people, but cartoons sort of looking faces looking at an offer with a dollar sign on it. And then the, the title was you know, how to have a great competing offer. And then there's a little picture of me down at the bottom saying, hey, this is our episode number seven of our podcast. So really kind of conveying it's about an offer and there's an offer on the table. It relates to dollars. So just telling your story. So it's really important to think about your imagery so you can get the point across. So it will work well in different modalities because that's the great thing is if you have a good image, you can use it across the different social channels and, and start it even on your blog and then do your distribution through your social channels from your blog. And that's the really cool thing is to reuse an image and not just have one sort of image for different channels, but really look at thinking through the imagery and thinking through the strategy of that image being in multiple places. So really, if you can display um, the, the product or service, right? So product, service, um, information, if that can be part of it, if, the, if you can get part of the info product service in it so that you get the concept, because a lot of people use this stock imagery and they just push it out there 
and they're using, trying to use the headline in their ads or the headlines in their blogs to catch people's attention when there's this huge space that's not even being used properly right below it with this giant picture, typically of just something that they've taken out of a, 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 a folder that's a stock image, like just a, of something random. I see it all the time. It's like 90% of the people don't even think through the image. Now, that's really what you need to do is stand out, right? So that image needs to stand out. It needs to become part of the strategy. It needs to be a little bit different, a little bit more cohesive with your, your matter. And the next thing to think is your branding. So is there colors that match your brand? Is there you know, fonts that match your brand? Are you trying to make sure that you stay consistent so that some, someone sees it again? There's this messaging trying to get into their sort of uh, engagement process with your brand that's similar so they get the fact that it's coming from you. Now again, you don't need to make it look salesy, but make it look consistent. You know, we use a, a light green border around our posts so that people know they're from us. And, and I know that there's a difference between, um, especially in Facebook, people know when it's an ad really at this point, but you can make it not look like an ad because it can look and convey a really good story and that people are just interested in general. Now, the one thing I will say that overrides this, and then I'll just get some, two more tips here, is use emotion, emotional content. Because people do not buy on logic, they buy on emotional content. So when you, when you see something, you've got to be dragged in from the emotions, and there's all the emotions that are involved in especially ads, which is fear and greed, and, and all those sort of Cialdini, we call them, thought processes of people trying to get to a better position or save or get something related. So if you can bring in the emotional content and think through the ad, and again, we're going to do the next episode on a bunch of reviews of ads and then critique them so you're going to see this and how people use you know, the, the, the emotional content of the ad to drive a thought process to get people to click the button, which might be learn more or uh, buy or whatever the, the terminology, if it's in Facebook or if it's on a blog post or if it's on a website, there's really good imagery strategies that you need to think through that are, there's images take up so much of these spaces of these places that you have to think through. Now here's the tips, especially in Facebook, go Google your competition. So if you can Google your competition, go look at what they're doing for their I mean, there's no reason, they're not going to copy it, but you can see what they're doing and what they're trying to get across. And there might be some keywords in their uh, ads that relate to the product or service that you're trying to serve or the information that you're trying to provide. Just Google that before you even start running the thought process around your ad so you can get some ideas. And then come up with two or three variations of your image and then bring it over to your designer and get it done. Or do it yourself in Canva or any of these online programs where you can do your own imaging. The key is don't initially just take that first one and go, okay, it's done. Take a, take a secondary look, look on a different um, set of circumstances. Use a couple different keywords when you're searching in Google. Again, this is a big tip out there. Use the tools that are right at your fingertips to get some variants to see some different types. So you might start in one direction but end up in another direction as you kind of look through different keywords that relate to your product, service, or information. I hope this helps. We're going to go through the details of uh, some going through some critiques in the next uh, episode.